Hey everyone, this is Mason from FilterGrade. The Essential Graphics panel is one of many panels in Premiere Pro. To open it, click on Graphics along the top of the program. This will open up a new panel on the side of your screen called Essential Graphics. It features a wide variety of text templates for titles, credits, and more. They range from simple text titles to full graphics animations. To use one, all you need to do is click and drag onto your timeline, and we can play it back and watch it animate. Now obviously we don't want it just to say coming up next, we might want it to say something else. So as you can see we're in the browse tab right now, just pan over to the edit tab, click on your title, and here we can see a lot of layers. So here you'll be able to click on the text, and you can change what it says, type in anything you want. And there's a lot of other settings that you can adjust from here, which we're going to go talk about. But first, let's take a look at these templates again. So there are quite a few preset templates that come with Adobe Premiere, but also you can see Adobe Stock over here. Adobe Stock has various free and premium animations. You can tell the premium ones by the dollar sign over here. Using one of these templates and making it your own can be a lot faster than making it from scratch. So I highly recommend using some of these if you're new to the Essential Graphics panel. You can also click this button down here to install your own if you've downloaded one from somewhere or made one yourself. Now of course you can create your own custom graphics. See here the text tool is selected. So go ahead and click anywhere on your screen and start typing. And over here all these options came back up. First thing we can do of course, we can change the font. So we can of course change that to something else. And then we can change the scale, change the kerning, really anything we want. You can use the selection tool to grab it, move it around to exactly where you want it. You can also make shapes. Do that by selecting the pen tool. You can either use the pen tool itself or create an easy rectangle or ellipse. So let's go ahead and create a rectangle here. Now we have this set of options. The one you probably want to deal with first is fill. You can change that to a different color. So let's make that purple. And now you can see here in the edit tab, we've got both of our layers. This looks kind of like Photoshop. You can see there's our shape layer, there's our text layer, and we can move them around. If we want to put the text up here, we can. Down here are also align and transform tools. So if you want to align certain layers, with each other, you can. So let's take our two text layers and align them together like that. And if we move one of them again, select them both, align them centered, we can do that. Line them to the right. So lots of alignment options. You can also, for any layer, click on the centering tools to center them. You can also use all of your layers as masks. We want to come down here to our shape. We can mask with shape and you can invert that. We can use that shape as a mask rather than a solid. You can also take a clip from your project panel and add that to the animation. So we'll just take this black video that we made, and add it in here, and now that is the bottom layer of our animation. Now, of course, we haven't done any animation yet, so let's start with responsive design. So here we can see responsive design position. This will pin this layer to another layer so let's go ahead and pin that text to our shape and we'll select top and bottom but not left and right to highlight what that does. And now if we drag the selection tool and drag this around, you can see the example text follows it vertically but not horizontally. And if we apply an animation, this will be the same case. If we animate the square, the text will move accordingly. So it only cares about the vertical position, but if we go back and click all of these, it will just move with it. And then similarly, if we just do horizontal, it doesn't care about moving up and down, but it does care about moving left and right. We'll pin that back to the video frame, and now it does not link to anything. Now the easiest animation can be achieved by clicking no layer in particular and selecting roll. Now this is a simple credit roll, and it has this nice scroll bar, so you can scrub through it without actually playing your video back. But if we did play the video back, it would look a little something like this. 
So that is a simple credit roll, no need to animate yourself. You can also start it off screen and end off screen by default. But if you wanted to, you could uncheck that and it starts with it right in the middle. You can also change the pre-roll and post-roll length. So if we wanted it to not come in immediately, we could increase the pre-roll length and now it waits that much time before starting the roll and adjust the speed accordingly. Next, we're going to do some actual manual animation. The easiest way to do this is here in the effect control panel. Now, if you're familiar with keyframing in Premiere Pro, then this should be easy. You do it the same way you'd animate anything else. So this animation will affect the entire thing if we do it up here in just this graphics vector motion. As you can see, when we move this around, it moves the entire thing. But if we open up text, for example, we can animate its position manually. So we'll go ahead and start that as a starting position, and then we'll make it go up off screen right here. And then if we play it back, it'll slowly animate between those two points. So standard keyframe animation, you can animate any of the properties of any of the layers this way. Now let's clear that animation. And we're gonna show how to animate in the actual essential graphics panel. So in this case, we just click the icon of the attribute that we wanna change until it's blue. Position already is. We move the playhead anywhere we want and we can adjust the animation up and now we'll animate from there back to the starting position. So we'll start there and then we'll go over here, move it down this time and then it'll go down. So very simple example of keyframing. As you can see, it did put those keyframes here. So I would highly recommend using the effect controls panel for the animation since it's a little bit smoother and you can see where all of your points are, but you can do it from the essential graphics panel. Now we're going to talk about intro duration and outro duration. This specifies a time frame that is going to be preserved for animations no matter what other changes you make. So you can change it on these times or you can grab these blue bars that will make the area gray in the effects control panel. And you can see the time change here. So if we add an animation, say position is here, and then we adjust it like that. So now if we play that, it'll go like that. So now we have those set, we're gonna make some other animations. So let's just change how the text works. So now we have this animation. And those second nodes are outside of this time frame. And then if we extend this, that is scaled, but the intro is preserved. So you can see how slow it was there and how fast it is here. If we extend this way far out, we can see this animation is still scaled. So now it's going to move very slowly. It's scaled with the time, but everything in our intro still stayed the same. No matter what, it's the same speed. So the gray area is protected. If you're doing a more advanced animation, you can group layers just like in Photoshop. So select layers you want to do, and you can just create a group. And of course you can name it whatever you want and expand it and hide it, just like in Photoshop. Next, we're going to talk about master styles. Let's take a look at our text. Let's change it to a different color. And then you see this thing called master styles. Our only option right now is none or create master text style. We're gonna do that. I'm just gonna call it text style one. And now we can see it made its own layer here in the project panel. Now we're going to do more text. And obviously it's the same as the previous one because it uh, is the last thing we use. So let's just make it something different. Let's change the font, change the color. Now we can apply this master style to it and it will become a copy of this text. Similarly, if we undo that, we can drag 
the text style from the project panel onto this text in the layers and it will become the same. Last thing we'll talk about is stroke. So we're gonna go back to our main text layer here, turn off the shadow that's set by default and add a stroke, which we can change the thickness of. But notice we can also add more strokes for additional effects. So let's make this one white and make it bigger. So now we have multiple layers of stroke here. And there's actually a lot of stroke settings. Clicking the wrench icon here, we'll come up with these line join and line cap settings. And that changes the exact attributes of your stroke. So you can really get into the granular details of your stroke settings. Now, if you want to use this for later, you can save this as a template. Just make sure it's selected, go to graphics, export as motion graphics template, and then you can choose where to store it. And then it will show up in your essential graphics panel. Thanks so much for watching this video on the essential graphics panel. I hope very much that you enjoyed it and that you learned something. The Essential Graphics panel is an awesome tool in Premiere Pro that lets you use shapes, graphics, and more to create something with lots of animation options. Let us know how you use this panel in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.